Dr. Neil Glass has been the superintendent for Cape Public Schools since 2017. In 2020, he was named the Missouri Association of School Administrators new superintendent of the year for the Southeast District. This school year will be Glass's final year with the district. Dr. Glass. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's good to see you. It's great to be here. We're, uh, we're here on a beautiful spring day and uh, boy, it's kind of hard to believe when you look, look at the calendar that uh, the school year is really kind of almost over. It, it isn't incredible. It's uh, amazing that, you know, we start the start the school year and, and we head to, to Christmas. We have these milestones and all of a sudden graduation's here and we're out of school. It's just like clockwork and uh, it's just amazing. We've had a great year. Uh, I'm happy and, and I know the, the faculty and staff are excited to, to see what this crop of students will do out in the, in the uh, real world. Does it get uh, quicker and quicker every year? It does. As a matter yeah. of fact, it does. Uh, you know, there's just so much uh, preparation that goes into a school year, but once all that preparation is done, it just it seems just to fly by and it's just an exciting feeling. You mentioned the, uh, the, the crop of the seniors going out into into school or, or work or whatever their endeavors might be. And, uh, you know, I, I know that there are, there are a variety of, of industries that are extremely important to Cape Girardeau, to Southeast Missouri, uh, but the Cape Public Schools and, and educating uh, the young people can't really think of anything more important uh, to, to, to lead the future. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you bring up a good point. You know, we listen to our area businesses and, and ask them what they're looking for. What do they need? What are, what are the skills that our students need to have in order to be successful out there in their businesses? And then we try to equip those, those students with those skills and we try to keep them, keep them at home the best we can. We know some students are going to go off and, and make their own way, but we hear the cry for local businesses and saying we need to grow our own talent uh, because uh, you know, there's a shortage here and, and we're trying to fulfill that shortage. You know, between us and Jackson, we've got close to 10,000 students and a lot of those students can stay right here as long as they can find good jobs. And um, with the help of the, uh, the area industries and businesses, we can, we can make that partnership happen. Um, we're excited. You know, one of the things that we've been focused on the last several years is um, creating pathways for students. You know, whether the, a student wants to come out with a certificate or whether they want to go into a two-year or four-year institution, the sky's the limit. And so we want to make sure that these, these kids have the proper exposure to what's out there, what they need for that, uh, um, for the, what they need for that career. It may not always be a, a four-year degree. It may not be a two-year degree. It may just be a certificate. So why rack up the student debt if you just need a certificate? On the other hand, you know, a four-year uh, four degree can lead to, to bigger and better things. So we want to make sure our students are exposed to all that. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, I, I, with talking with you, uh, we're on the chamber board together, and you mentioned that you know the the cry from from the local businesses of trying to keep you know our people here. Uh, and I know that's easier said than done. It is. Um, but I, I would imagine you know with those with the pathways that you have outlined there, that's got to make that student experience so fulfilling. I, I would imagine that you know maybe. There's times when a student, they don't, they're not sure where they fit in right. and, what the, and what the future holds for them, but, but knowing that, hey, it's not a one size fit all. There's, there's plenty of ways for you to, to move beyond you know, these doorways and, and be, a, be a successful uh, you know, citizen, contributing citizen in Southeast Missouri, wherever you may decide to go. And what, the big part of the superintendent job is to go out and make those connections make those connections with the chamber, like you said, and meet with those business partners and actually understand what they're looking for. That way I can go back and communicate or invite that business in to our career fairs or uh, guest speakers or whatever um, in order to make sure that that student hears that and is exposed to that and sees the potential that's right here in Cape Girardeau or in this region. Do you think it's at an all time kind of high as far as hearing that cry from, from businesses or is it just we're paying a little more attention. To you know, I'm in tune with it more, more so now than ever. Um, I really do hear uh, that uh, the talent is needed. There, there's a shortage. And for whatever reason, I, I don't know what caused it, why there's this shortage, but all of a sudden there's a shortage and we've got to figure out a way here locally to fill that gap. So what are some of those things that you guys have been doing over the last few years to 
uh, kind of open up the doors, so to speak, for some of the students? We've been trying, we've actually went in down into the junior high and exposed them to like the, what the Career and Technology Center has to offer. They, you know, they offer so many things, and that's one of the hidden gems right here in Southeast Missouri. Absolutely. If you haven't visited this, the Career Technology Center, you need to do so uh, because they offer everything. They've got their, the certificates for almost anything that you want to go, go into. And you, go, you got the Allied Health, all of that. You got the welding, the construction trades. Uh, you got the electrical. You got uh, uh, software design, um, graphic design, you know, STEM, STEM um, areas out there. I mean, just the, there's so much out there. Um, video broadcasting, as a matter of fact, is, uh, is out there too, Mr. McWilson. Um, you know, we've got so many things to offer. And so we've been really trying to hammer home with our students what, they're, what we have to offer here at Cape Schools. Uh, beyond the traditional classrooms, we also have all these areas of, uh, of, of technical training. And I would imagine that kind of has to challenge you uh, and, the, and the staff and, and, and the district to look at areas that maybe you didn't, you know, didn't know what coding was or how it worked. But hey, this is a, this is a viable, you know, career path for somebody and we, we got to figure out what it is. That's right. And especially, you know, for those of us that have our, our seasoned veterans, let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, we didn't grow up with a lot of this stuff. So we've got to constantly be evolving and learning as we go so we can communicate that to our students. Lots of times, as you well know, they know a lot more than what we do. We just got to kind of direct them and facilitate it and, uh, and get them on the, on the right track. I know that sometimes being seasoned, uh, you know, you don't understand why maybe someone's always on their phone or their mobile device or whatever the case is. But I mean, th there's th that's a f the future that's to a right. degree, and being able to understand those things is the future. So you, you kind of got to get in there and, and work with that and and, and make it applicable um, for what is now. And that's true. You know, we've struggled with that. <laughs> What, what's a healthy consumption of, of, of this technology and what's not and going one-to-one -one devices uh, early on in my career and then, and then you know, morphing into more and more of that where it's all online and then you know, uh, uh, fighting with the, the cell phones in the classrooms. But you, we know that that's, you know, I can't, I can't go a day without my cell phone either. So we right. know that that's an integral part of, of what these students are gonna be exposed to out in the real world. Well, we have, uh, luckily we're here for two segments with you. I uh, want to obviously talk about uh, the great things with the Cape School District. Um, obviously you're moving on and want to kind of look back at some things that you're really proud of and, and uh, talk about the future a bit. So um, thanks for being here for a couple segments with us. There's a lot, a lot to get to and we'll continue our conversation next with Dr. Neil Glass. That comes up next on Cape Chronicle. Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. We continue our conversation with Cape Girardeau Public School District Superintendent, Dr. Neil Glass. Well, Dr. Glass, um, I know July 1, you hand the reins over to a new superintendent, um, but so let's, let's just take a, a, a minute to look at some of the things that have been a part of your tenure. Um, you know, when, whenever I was looking at some of the list, uh, you know, one of the things that kind of comes to mind and one of the things that I feel is what I would say is almost a reinvigorated tiger pride. And I think no matter where you're at, you know, having pride in your, in your public school system is just so important to a community. And I feel that that's happened under your watch. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I feel the tiger pride. Um, just, just every day as I walk the as I walk the halls and whether the elementary buildings, junior high or high school buildings, I mean, it just they're they're pr the kids are proud to be there, and the community's proud to be a part of it, and and that's what I I've enjoyed um, during my time is seeing how that's evolved and the more that the the business partners have been become engaged and and a lot of other partners have become engaged and we really have become this 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 community um, that's kind of. Uh, been united, sure. so to speak, and, Absolutely. and I feel really, really good about that. Was was that kind of a like a goal for you when you took over in 2017? Is you know identify ways to to grow that? Yeah, I, I think it, it had been started. Um, you know, I had a great mentor, Dr. Jim Welker, 
uh, very, very good man, uh, great superintendent. And I had the, uh, the opportunity to learn under him and I, I very much appreciated that. But we still had work to do and we still have work to do, you know, but uh, I think the partnerships, I value those uh, immensely, you know, with the city and, and the chambers, of course, you know, and, and there's so many to the list. I can't imagine listing them all because I will leave somebody out, but, but we just have so many partnerships and they're so interconnected that it just, it's what makes this community great and it rolls right into the school system and, and those kids are a part of that. And so without that, uh, we, we wouldn't have the pride that we have. And so with that, it just strengthens us as a district. I know in your time, uh, three bond issues uh, have passed and, and that is not an easy task. It just seems like yesterday we were, we were trying to pass our first one. Had been, one had been passed for quite some time. Uh, it was like in 99 or something of that nature when the CTC and the high school were built. But, uh, you know, it had been 10 years since they, they passed one. Our first one was a $40 million bond issue. And that was my first experience with passing a bond issue of, of that magnitude. And, uh, and we did it fairly well. And uh, I think we got a lot of bang for our buck, so to speak, and got a lot of nice facilities out of it and a lot of things for, again, that goes back to Tiger Pride, a lot of things for the kids to be proud of. But three, yeah, $72 million worth of investment that the taxpayers made for, for our students. And um, they've embraced that. Uh, our students are taking full advantage of that. And we've still got, uh, uh, you know, more construction left. You know, we've, we just opened up the Aquatic Center, um, the JE Community Center, uh, which is more than a pool, and we may get to that, may not, but uh, you know we've got a lot of great things going, and it's again, it's about connecting this community and giving these kids opportunities. You brought up the Jefferson Elementary Building and and that project, which I know again was not an easy task, no. uh, but but talk about that partnership with the city and the school and and, and the the efforts and the fruits of those labors that are to come. Absolutely, and that was a lot of, lot of people um, coming together that uh, under one vision, and that vision was to create an asset in, in the uh, uh, Jefferson Elementary attendance area that would be a focal point for that community. And we call it a community center because it's more than a pool. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of education going on there. Uh, we hope that there's a lot of uh, uh, STEM type activities going on in, in that pool. Plus life-saving activities, we're going to, you know, we're going to help uh, the city with life, uh, lifeguarding and, and training of those lifeguards, uh, and of course, just um, your swim lessons of our kids. We've already started down there with Jefferson Elementary, and you don't know how many lives you've saved just because you've provided a kid a swim lesson. You know, uh, you hear of drownings every summer, and we've got a lot of bodies of water out here, so that's very important to us. So. You know, just to have that exposure again, you know, with a facility like that uh, means a lot. There's been so many people take advantage of that, uh, of that aquatic center down there and also the gymnasium that we built right next to it. You know, it's been a, a real uh, nice uh, addition to the Parks and Rec Department. They've utilized it quite a bit and it's been a great partnership for us. I know the graduation rate has also improved under your guidance. Yeah, we, we focused heavily on that and, you know, I, a lot of credit goes to our principals and our faculty and staff. They spend extra hours and extra time and I can't give them enough credit. You know, they go above and beyond to try to help these kids in any way they can and, you know, failure's not an option um, in their eyes. And so we want to make sure that, that each kid has the opportunity if they want to. Now, it, it takes some want to as well. Sure. Uh, but if they want to graduate, they're going to be able to graduate. So let's look real quick to, I mentioned there's not much time in school left, uh, but also not much time uh, w with you uh, as superintendent and uh, Dr. Howard Benyon will be taking over July 1. Talk a bit about, about him as the next superintendent. Yeah, uh, so his, uh, uh, we're kind of going to unveil him tonight at, uh, at the junior high, high school and you know, He's a great man. He's worked underneath me for four years. Uh, he's very familiar with all the school districts, about the visions we have for, for the public school system, about the partnerships. He's already on a couple different boards. Um, he's a great fit for this community. I feel like it's in, in very good, good hands. And I think one of the big parts of, a, uh, of a, uh, a good leader is that you leave a good succession plan. And I think that's what we've done here. Will he be uh, following up with your 
snow closure videos. I can't <laughs> speak for him more than that, but uh, you know, he's made mention that he may try to upscale me on that. Upscale? Yeah. Uh, so try to we'll upscale see. you some. We'll see. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, any idea what the future holds for you at this point? You know, the sky's the limit. You know, I'm still young enough where I can go out there and, and, and start another career. Uh, you know, uh, I'm excited about that. There's a lot of opportunities out there. I'm already dabbling in a few things, but uh, you know, doors are open and I'm just going to wait to see what God brings my way. Just uh, under a minute here left. It, can you can you identify a proudest moment as your time uh, with the Cape Public Schools? I know there's a lot of them. It, there, there are. There's so many. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy. It's the relationships that I built, though. Of course, you know, as a superintendent, you surround yourself with great people, and, and and those great people, you have to rely on them to do great work. And those kids that I see every day are uh, an embodiment of, of the great work that those, those folks are doing. And that's what makes me proud. So when you're not working to lift up the school district, to support the school district, what are, what are some hobbies? What do you like to, to do well, in your I, downtime? Yeah, so I've got a couple farms and, okay. and uh, I like to work on the farm a little bit. I got a few real estate properties that I like to go and just piddle around on. I like, I like to kind of flip properties. That's sure. kind, of, yeah. kind of my downtime is, is, is trying to be the, the Chip and Joanne, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't think I'm, I'm near as crafty as they are. But uh, anyway, that's what I enjoy. I just like working with my hands and just kind of disengaging from a lot of the, the stress that comes with, with just the daily operations of being a superintendent. That, that takes a lot of time. That's a that's a committed hobby. Uh, yeah, well, it's a committed <laughs> hobby. That's right. My <laughs> wife will tell you that as well. Well, um, congratulations to you. Thank you, Mike. Um, as I said before, um, you've done so much to, to build that Tiger pride and uh, and, and best of luck uh, in, in the future with whatever you decide to do. I appreciate that very much. You bet. Thank you and so my much. My pleasure.